All right. So, here's what we're doing this time. Solving for the nature of the roots, just for a quadratic. And the main thing we need to remember are all our notes about the discriminant, right? So what's the discriminant? That was that part of the quadratic formula. If the discriminant is positive and it's a perfect square, then there's two rational roots. Uh, if the discriminant is positive and not a perfect square, it's got two irrational roots. Uh, if the discriminant is zero, then it has one root or two equal roots. Two equal roots means like x equals 5 and x equals 5. Kind of silly. And of course, if it's negative, that means there's no real roots or only imaginary roots exist. Negative means less than zero. Positive means greater than zero. Okay, so let's do some examples here. Some are going to be, it goes easy, medium, hard here, kind of. Um, describe the nature of the roots. What are they going to be? So to do that, I have to know my, my discriminant. Okay, and that was the, under the radical of the quadratic formula. That's b squared minus 4ac. And we use the triangle symbol for the discriminant. Now remember, a is going to be 2, b is going to be 11, and c is going to be 15. So when I substitute them into my formula, that means 11 squared minus 4 times a times c. What does that give me? And the number that gives me is going to be uh, 121 minus... The number that that gives me is going to determine the nature of the roots. If it's positive, we're going to have real roots. This is 1. Okay, well that's, that's great. Well, what does that tell me? Okay, it tells me a couple things. First, 1 is a perfect number. Not perfect number, square number. So if it's a square number, okay, what does that mean? If it's positive and a perfect square, then we have two rational roots. Two roots that are going to be, um, that can be expressed as a fraction. So my roots, I've got two rational roots. Okay? Two rational roots. Why? Because one is a perfect number. Uh, because one, I keep saying perfect number, one is a square number square number. Okay, next one. I want to find ABC first, but of course I have to rearrange this so it's set to zero. So that's a positive 20 equals zero. Uh, find the values of A, B, and C. Okay, so I get A is 5, B is ne negative 20, don't forget that, and C is 20. So that means I'm going to do uh, the, the, what's the value of the discriminant? b squared minus 4ac. What is it going to be? Uh, don't forget to put negative 20 in the brackets. b squared minus 4 times 5 times 20. And cut to the chase. What does that give me? It gives me 400 take away 400 equals what? Equals 0. That's what it equals. So what does zero tell us? What is that? What's the deal there? Okay, if our discriminant is equal to zero, that means we have one rational root, or we can say two equal roots. I like the one rational root better, two equal roots. And of course, what this means is this quadratic, this isn't graphed perfectly at all, but it means that it's just going to be sitting somewhere on the x-axis. And this guy right here is going to have two x-intercepts. Now, these graphs are not accurate, just to demonstrate the point of the root. So, like that. All right? One root, one x-intercept. Two roots, two x-intercepts. Okay, let's look at another example here. That's a bit more tricky. Here we go. This is getting better. Uh, for what values of P, what's the value of that um, letter right there, where uh, it'll have real solutions, okay? Okay, what that means uh, is that real solutions are going to be when the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, all right? It, my discriminant can't be negative, so real 
solutions means that b squared minus 4ac is going to be positive or zero. That's the deal. That's, that's what that means right there. So let's find the value of the discriminant. Oh, no, we can't find the value of the discriminant. We're going to set this equal to zero first. Let's do that. x squared minus 10x minus p equals zero. And this is a bit different because um, I'm just going to put it down here. a equals 1. That's because that's my coefficient there. b equals negative 10. And c is this. And that's something new and different. So what that means is that my discriminant has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that means b squared, negative 10 squared, minus 4 times a times c, and c is negative p, that's kind of weird, but we can handle it, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we're going to simplify this expression here and solve for p. Negative 10 squared is 100. Now, when I simplify all this, negative 4 times 1 time, times negative p, what that simplifies to is plus 4p. All of that. And that's going to be greater than or equal to 0. Hey, now I'm solving in an equation. Subtract the 100 from the other side. So 4p is greater than or equal to negative 100. And if I divide by 4, I'll find all the values of p that satisfy that situation. p is going to be greater than or equal to negative 100 divided by 25, which gives me p is greater than or equal to not 25, Mr. Riccardi. That's 4, of course, divided by the coefficient. Negative 100 divided by 4 negative 25. So what does that mean? It means any value, any letter, greater than or equal to negative 25 will make this equation have real solutions. Okay? Make it have two or one x-intercept that have real solutions. Okay. Last example. Okay. Last one. For what value of a, that coefficient right there, of the x squared term, uh, will the roots of this guy be equal? What does that mean? Okay, what, is, what does the roots equal mean? That means uh, two equal roots are going to mean that the discriminant is going to be equal to zero. And then it will have one root, otherwise known as two equal roots. Okay, so let's get A, B, and C here. A is going to equal A, because that's the coefficient there. That's, that's the deal. B is going to be negative two. And C is going to be equal to 5. So I'm going to say, what will the value of a be to make that equal 0? When will, um, when will b squared minus 4ac equal 0? Well, b is negative 2 squared minus 4 times a. I don't know what that is yet. That's the whole thing what I'm solving for. Times c equals 0. Now, the hard part might be just simplifying this bit here. Negative 2 squared is 4, of course. And multiplying all this together, what do I get? Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 times a is negative 20a equals 0. Okay? So now it's just a, a two-step equation. Subtract 4 from the other side. Negative 20a equals negative 4. And then to solve for a, I'm going to divide by negative 20. So a equals negative 4 divided by negative 20. We don't leave it like that, of course. That's also known as 1 fifth. Okay. Okay. So there you go. So what does that mean? That means if, if our coefficient is 1 fifth, that parabola is going to be sitting on the x-axis. Okay. Well, that's it for now.